Fasting teaches us to handle self-control. And so, this is something contradictory in, in and of itself. I want Muslims yeah. to understand the benefits of Quran for this book. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of uh, the Clear Podcast with the Furqan Project. Uh, just a quick shout out, inshallah. First of all, today we have our esteemed guest, Brother Hamid Siddiqui, the author of The Clear Signs of the Quran. This is actually a podcast that we've been looking forward to for a very, very long time here at the Furqan Project. Uh, these are books that I've benefited from immensely. Alhamdulillah, we've we've gone live on social media. We've talked about, you know, some of the signs and the miracles and the science and the logic behind what's going on in the Quran and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, you know, certain miracles and so on and so forth. And here, alhamdulillah, we have the man, we have the genius behind behind the text, Brother Hamid Siddiqui. And we are so honored. We are so honored uh, for, for, for you to join us, alhamdulillah. So Jazakumullah khair for being with us. Thank you very much for such a generous introduction. I feel more humble when anybody tries to give a, a you know, a introduction like this. I'm just a very simple uh, Muslim trying to learn Quran every day and trying to glorify the word of God. MashaAllah. And many, by your logic, by how you understand it, you've benefited thousands, MashaAllah, if not millions, inshaAllah, to come. So Jazakumullah khair for all of your efforts and Jazakumullah khair for everything that you do. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, let's just get right, right into it, inshaAllah. Firstly, what inspired you to write the clear signs of the Quran? What, what, what was that thing that, what was that, you know, pushing motive? Uh, for for you to actually sit down and say this is, I have to come up with this because this is a project that's very very amazing. Yeah, uh, this actually took me many years to um, develop. More than roughly half of my life, I have spent in uh, mostly non-Muslim environment, mostly with non-Muslim friends, mm. and mm. mostly reading, writing about. Uh, science and other subject has nothing to do with Deen. Mm. However, I was following Deen, and since I was a small minority, uh, people um, in all uh, areas have always asked me questions. I could not convince them very well. Right. And right. also, having spent the um, prayers in different countries, traveled over the last 40 years, trained people in science and engineering and logic and business, um, I developed kind of a skill to try to simplify a very complex subject into simple terms. For example, I teach entire uh, business administration and petroleum engineering and energy industry in, in five days. That's the job. I have to do it. To, I have to bring it down to sometimes three days. Yeah. When I'm training CEOs, deputy ministers, members of the board, senior level staff, junior level, odd levels, I somehow see that you have to filter it down and make it something palatable for them to understand and mm. accept it. Mm. Too much detail sometimes uh, turn away the people. So having traveled so many places, like for example, I travel to every uh, prophet's um, uh, muqam that mm. I have in my book. Right. From mm. other, from uh, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam to our last and final prophet. Some so all those places, meeting different people mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. I, I have trained in about probably uh, 30, 40 countries and trained about maybe over 500 business managers Mashallah. and some 10 CEOs, yeah. including members of the board of OPEC. So when talking to people about uh, logic and understanding, I developed, I said that I must I must write something about Quran because it's a word of God and mm, mm. and this book will serve like a handbook or a warmer before yeah. you really start the exercise. Right, you must right. warm up and build your mind to think in that direction and pick up the marvels wherever you want. Mm. So, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So, so basically the manifestation or the inspiration behind this is basically to make the Quran and make the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relatable to the people of logic, the people of science, because, you know, in, in, in all different avenues of your life, like you said, you've met people with all different colors that range and vary from different cultures, colors, different backgrounds, and people just understand things differently. Right. And I found that I actually find that point very interesting. And, and that's one of the things that I love about your book is that it, um, you know, and, and, and finding the similarities, you know, linking the, the, the link of logic to the Qur'an. Because I found that the Qur'an, it talks to different people in different ways. There's people that understand the Qur'an out of hope. 
They only look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. They, they're counting on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Yeah. And then you have people that are afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath. They're afraid of God's ghadab, you know, they're mm. afraid of God's anger. So they're like, no, 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 because this is something that, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I don't want to upset God because I love him and I don't want his wrath. You know what I mean? So I'm going to stay away from these certain things. And then you have the, 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 the logical and the scientific mindset, right? Where it says, don't do such a thing because here's the reasons why, mm -hmm. right? This thing would harm you. This thing would do this. This is a cause of X, Y, and Z. And do X, Y, and Z. Like, for example, what we're going to be talking about today is fasting, inshallah, in a, in a few minutes. Um, what's the benefits of fasting? What's this and what's that? So there's there's logical reasons. You know what I mean? Exactly. So that's so basically that's the inspiration. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And in addition to that, uh, I thought that when I mentioned the clear science, there are clear signs today with the most advanced technology. For example, mm. did... Uh, the community of uh, Prophet Luth really get destroyed? Mm. If it did, where are they? What are the reminiscences? What are the scientific evidences? Right. And the Ad community that was destroyed uh, during uh, after Prophet Hud salam, where is it? Does it really exist? Mm. I'm showing the ground penetrating satellite images of that place as if now, and there's every uh, geophysical evidence present that that community flourished at one time, they had fresh water, they have streams, they have they are very affluent, and today they are buried under hundreds of feet of sand in the hottest desert. Subhanallah. You know, yeah. some of these things are very intriguing, not non-intuitive. Yeah. You would not expect that to happen. Yeah. And for example, we 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 read the story of uh, Prophet Nu. Mm. What happened? Was it a global warming? Suddenly, yeah. so much water. Was <laughs> you know? A big ball of water. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Yeah. And and many of those pieces of information are clear science using the most advanced technology, mm -hmm. using the most verifiable science. You can say that exists today, and mm -hmm. that it is. Mm -hmm. And every uh, ayah in Quran refers to that. Yes. And the, yes. at that time. Prophet's time and centuries after Prophet's time, people did not know about yes. For example, the return of uh, Pharaoh's body intact. Yes. Who would yes. have assumed, you know, exactly, exactly. <laughs> that Pharaoh's body would be intact? Uh, the, the, the most, um, mm. I think, I would say, uh, hardcore criminal minded person, his body is intact in a museum today. Yeah, so that people yeah, can think yeah. about it and see. So many of those. Scientific notations uh, and uh, scientific statements that are present in Quran, for example, um, the the big mountains graph the earth mm. so that the tectonic plates do not move uncontrollably. And they're stabilizing factors, Stabilizing, yeah. for example, the, your fingerprints mm -hmm. are unique with billions of people. And uh -huh. the, the gender of the child is decided by father, not by mother. Mm -hmm. Many dynasties and kings have changed their wives because they yeah. wanted a male offspring. So there are yeah. many such evidences. Uh, um, this sun and the stars are being uh, there for only a limited time because mm. the energy gets exhausted and they go away. Mm. And uh, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked so much about space and solar system and its surrounding, its uniqueness that you must explain in detail by simply understanding the translation from Arabic text to it's your language physics, yeah. does not give the full benefit of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's my goal is to say when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Surah Hadith that this is of benefit to you. Mm -hmm. Previous scholars, previous tafasirs have written that with the iron we can make buildings, bridges, or even swords, come mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. But without iron, you will not have the telephone working. You will mm -hmm. not have the electromagnetism. Without iron in your body, your oxygen will not be carried to your brain, which is a feat for the brain. Mm -hmm. And so many things are there that are of scientific nature as we progress. We realize it's uh, with clarity, with the new science and technology. Mm -hmm. So this clear science is for all times. SubhanAllah, <laughs> SubhanAllah. So that's a very beautiful thing because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلِ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَوُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know something, right? So the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about metaphysical equations, you know what I mean? What does that say in metaphysics? What does that say when it comes to stargazing back at the time of the Prophet and after that? 
you know, so uh, that's actually that's actually amazing. So subhanAllah to actually manifest that and put that into an actual text that's understandable to the people of you know that, that to the people of knowledge, you know, to the yeah. people of of dhikr in, the, in yeah. that sense is is a very beautiful thing, mashallah. Before we get into the topic of fasting, Allah subhanahu wa taala, He says in uh, He says in the Quran, بعد أن نقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. All you who believe, fasting has been prescribed to you. Just like it's it's been prescribed to the people before you, لعلكم تتقون, so that you might find piety. So the people before us, obviously, we know is, are are the Jews and the Christians, because Jew, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they are the three monothe monotheistic religions. So can you please describe some of the similarities between the three religions, and okay. some of the differences as well? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, for example, this is a very interesting. Uh, a question. Let me answer that. I will narrow it down. In my book, I've probably written about 40 similarity and differences topic by topic, mm -hmm. but I'm going to reduce it to probably 12 of them. Mm. First and foremost, let's compare and look at that similarity and differences between three religions and take a subject like Jesus Christ itself. Where does Jesus Christ stand in Islam, in Christianity, and in Judaism? Similarly, mm. we'll look up few topics and right. say how we compare. For example, um, Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, was highly revered prophet. Yes. Uh, one of the most pro uh, revered, one of the most often um, mentioned prophet uh, and born to Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. uh, and no father. And um, he is, whereas in Christianity, he's the second person of the Trinity and born to Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. So sim similar yes, yes. idea. But in Judaism, uh, an ordinary Jew, not the Messiah, nor a divine person. So the Jews believe that he's just an order, ordinary, ordinary Jew. Yeah. yeah. And if you look at the similarities, you'll see a lot of similarities and, uh, between Islam and Christianity. And most of the time, Judaism denies it. Yes, yes. However, very common. today, Judaism and Christianity are very close. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. both kind of oppose Islam. Mm -hmm. But if you go second point, Jesus Christ's mission. Isa Islam proclaimed the Injil, which is uh, a holy book. Yeah. Uh, one of the... The Bible. One of the four, four books, the Bible that came. Mm -hmm. And uh, however, in Islam, we know that book has been altered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it has been altered by man. So obviously, mm -hmm. it's not the same thing that it was originally given to. Yes. And that's why we have uh, Quran. And we'll talk about what how Quran is different. Mm -hmm. never been touched by man. Yes. And I'll prove yes. you mathematically, statistically, uh, logically and also linguistically. Mm -hmm. If you arrange all the ayat in, in, in by by computer and see them, you see the structures that couldn't have mm. been manipulated. Oh, I would mm. love to get into that. <laughs> yeah. And if whereas in, in Christianity, this uh, uh, Jesus Christ's mission was to reconcile man to God th yeah. um, through his death as a sacrifice for the sin of all humanity. That's, that's in that's Christianity. Christ that's in Christianity. Right. Now, sins cannot be atoned in Islam. Whereas uh, in Christianity, Isa al -Islam took the world's sins. Mm -hmm. So that's something uh, we don't have. We don't believe mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, every, individual, every individual is responsible. We have an accountability. Yes. You, I cannot give my accountability to you and mm -hmm. I go and do mm -hmm. what I want and you suffer on my right, behalf. Right. The, the <laughs> it, doesn't whole idea of very, it doesn't look very wrong. Yeah, and yeah. that's why people say uh, you cannot mix religion and politics. Whereas in Islam, there's no such separation mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a facts of life you yeah. cannot say that this is inside the religion this is outside the religion right, everything right, is right. under deen yes us. yes yes now of course when it comes to judaism they reject the idea of jesus christ as a messiah mm. again a huge difference big, big when difference, they are yeah. not considered him as a messiah mm -hmm. They just discover him as something else. Yeah. We'll keep that aside. There's, there's, there's not yeah. much left. Whereas yeah. for, for us, he's the very revered prophet. Yes. Min ulul azmi min al-rusul. From the five most prominent prophets, actually. Yes. Yeah. So. Now, when it comes to Jesus Christ's death, Isa alayhi salam, we believe, was taken away. He was not crucified. Yes. And he's going to come back again. Yes. And in Christianity, he was crucified. And Jesus was crucified for his claim to be divine, according to Judaism. Mm -hmm. So they both uh, believe. So the Jews believe that he, that Isa alayhi salam, the Jews believe that Jesus, the son of Mary, was crucified because he claimed divinity. Yeah, he claimed divinity. Right, which is also a lie because he never claimed divinity. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. So uh, that, 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 that's where 
uh, we are very logical. Mm-hmm. We say that uh, he's taken away and he's going to come back, which is same thing in in Chris. In that Christian. that actually makes a lot of sense. I'm sorry to cut you off because this this kind of highlights something right here. Um, so the Jews, they, I mean, obviously it's very, it's it's not. It's not a it's not a it's not a lie and it's not hidden that they you know a lot of them they they made up a whole bunch of like lies and they make up a whole bunch of like you know fabrications mm-hmm. right uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you really ex- are you really so hopeful in that you know the Jews would actually believe in you and they had a whole group of them that would change the word of God himself yeah. Like in yeah. other words, like if they don't have any, you know, modesty with God, like are you really so surprised at that? Yeah. So the fact that they would they, it was it was actually the people at the time of Isa alayhi the people at the time of Jesus, they were the ones who actually came up with this lie of he is the son of God and that's what they ended up changing in their books, yeah. saying that Jesus claimed divinity when he never claimed divinity. Yeah. And that's where Islam comes and polish it. Subhanallah. Yeah. <laughs> Subhanallah. You see that's something I didn't I I didn't know that. That's I didn't true. know that. Yeah, sorry. So keep going. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to Holy Spirit, uh, for example, in Islam, it's Jibreel uh, uh, yes. alayhi This is the Holy Spirit, uh, and in Christianity, the third person of Trinity, genuinely divine, mm. uh, with the Father and the Son, and He's worshipped and glorified. So that concept, the the three in one, one in three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it does not sound very clear. To yeah, many people, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you got to force it to say, mm. "Well, this is a religion; don't question it." Yeah, yeah. Whereas Islam is open to inquiry. Yes, yeah. Quran is open to inquiry. Mm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say, "Had it been from non-Allah, an entity, there would be many Ihtilaf. contradictions." Yes, yeah. there, there, are, there are no ihtilaf here mm-hmm. because it's There's open no to inquiry. Whereas yeah. here. Uh, yeah. That itself. Uh, so Christianity just says blindly believe. Islam says no. Bring your belief. Bring your contradictions. Ask. And we'll clarify. Yeah, yeah. and we'll, that's true. Yeah, and there is there's no distinct uh, Holy Spirit, but a divine power that was given to prophets according to Judaism. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to tradition, Hadith is the collection of uh, acts and deeds and practices of Prophet right. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, which is very clear for us, which is right after Quran. Anything we need to do is to follow the Sunnah. Uh, in Christianity, the writings of early church of fathers and and the councils, including the creeds. So mm. it's kind of variable. It's it's not so fixed and uh, as something. There are many uh, affiliations that believe in one or the other. Mm. In Judaism, you have Talmud and oral tradition explain and interpret the Tanakh. Mm. So. These are the tradition differences when it comes to rituals. Islam is shahada, uh, the prayer five times, uh, zakat, giving it to charity, uh, swam, fasting during holy month and hajj. Mm. Now, recently I heard Pope said had the had rest of the world been following Islamic principle of zakat, there would be no poverty and no excessive wealth. Yes, that's definitely that's true. Something that, my next yeah. uh, goal would be to write something on, on that as well as the financial aspects of Islam. That yeah. and, you know, Another very, very big uh, uh, financial expert said that had there been no river, then no you interest, know, no, 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 no interest yeah. that we have it in our system, uh, the world would have been better off and yes. it, it wouldn't be so yeah. unstable. So mm-hmm. those are the, some of the things that we have differences, whereas the example of rituals that there's, I can't find very specific in Judaism because... Uh, uh, you know, it, it may vary quite a bit. When it comes to mm-hmm. sin, which is a very important thing in Islam, That's you a huge are thing. responsible for your sin. Mm-hmm. Nor your father, nor your mother, yeah. nor your brother, <laughs> yeah, right, right. nor any, any scholar. Yeah. Whereas in, in, in Christianity, atonement is already taken care by yeah, somebody uh, else. Jesus Christ. So. And this is something contradictory in, in and of itself. You can't, I mean, you can't go out there and commit a crime and be like, someone else is going to be responsible yeah. for me running a red light or something like yeah. that. So I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It you won't work in today's court. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Said, it's my wife who break the law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is the law. SubhanAllah. So I, I yeah. want to go uh, pretty uh, quickly. I think we are... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, let's let's see. Like the birth of Jesus itself, yeah. uh, we have we have covered it. Second coming of Jesus, another important thing that mm. in Islam we know that Jesus Christ will come back. So if anybody yes. endorses Abrahamic religions, hundred percent, it's Islam. Mm-hmm. We yes. endorse Moses, yes. we endorse Jesus, mm. and we are told not to compare. 
mm. and not to say mm. who is superior than the other exactly la nufarriqu bayna ahad min rusul so this is a very universal concept mm. we have no conflict with anybody <laughs> right 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 yeah we accept them all so yeah. in fact there is plenty uh, for others to celebrate the commonality rather than fight on contradictions yes Yes, yes. Islam is very open to everybody. Yeah. No. Islam says bring it in bring it and in. let's let's compare the, the 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 two or three. Yeah. Let's compare our differences and let's see from there this is what the actual way is. Yeah. Right? That's actually something very beautiful subhanallah. And, and yeah, you find that you find that a very common theme. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says qul fatu bit tawrati fasluha in kuntum sadiqin. Bring the Torah and 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 recite it if you're actually truthful in whatever it is that you're claiming bring the injeed bring the bible bring bring your previous scriptures and then compare it to the quran because you'll see that the quran is actually polishing a lot of the stuff that they had you know contradicted right um for example i think that they would they, they would have said oh uh, no one is going to enter paradise except for who is jewish and then the christians would say no one is going to going to enter paradise except for who is christian yeah. right god says Show me the receipts. You know, <laughs> where, where did that come from? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's very much so, like today's business. Yeah, you cannot say uh, I forgot my driver's license. It is home. Yeah, well, the cop says no. You're supposed yeah. to carry it all the time. You have to have it with you right <laughs> now. With you right yeah, now. exactly. Yeah. Subhanallah. And now, just a quick break from a message from our sponsors. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Uh, of course, alhamdulillah, we have Brother Hamid Sadiqi, the author of the uh, the Clear Signs of the Quran, volumes one and two, and he's also working on some amazing projects. Now, uh, what I wanted to talk about today is, inshallah, the benefits of fasting. So obviously, Allah subhanahu wa taala wouldn't put anything in the Quran. He wouldn't put anything. He wouldn't prescribe anything to to the human being just like just just for the just for the sake of having it there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's 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 scientific benefits. There's spiritual benefits and things like that. Now, what are some of the scientific benefits? Like what happens what happens to the body when a person goes into this uh, this dry fasting, as they call it? Thank you very much. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, as I mentioned, and I, as I have dealt this subject, the clear signs of the Quran, uh, the words of God has been good for all times. Mm. It's not just some, some centuries back they were okay, but now it is not. Mm. It doesn't get obsolete. Now, when it comes to fasting, um, in 2016, a Japanese uh, scholar found out that fasting has so many medical benefits. Mm. Now we follow and we 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 follow the Prophet and. read from quran that we have to do fasting simply because god told us mm -hmm. but it shows us that anything that god has prescribed for us has benefits for us in this world mm. most of the thing that i have dealt in the subject is the is the this text of god is to to get the benefit for this world of course as a bonus you also get the benefits in akhira yes but of course we live yeah. in once yeah. <laughs> so yeah. but fasting removes the harmful proteins that are developing in the body okay and that that i have explained in the book is with the with about 16 references from national health in us in us as well as the nobel prize winning theory uh, called autophagy which kind of nourishes the um cellular system of our body right uh removes all the toxins or Uh, bad, uh, bac uh, bad bacteria, bad bacteria, yeah. or or rather, even uh, at the cellular level, you're talking about removing those proteins that may lead to problems in future. For example, mm. um, it 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 kind of conditions your body uh, to increase uh, vitality, to increase uh, defense against diseases, and even defense against cancer. and it also maintains against cancer itself in fact that's what his his theory is about some of the toxins are removed oh, some no. of those those things are removed 
I mean, this is not the only thing that the people fast, they're not going to get cancer. It's not mm. that. But it removes a lot of those things that are harmful to our body. Mm -hmm. And that's why it has been prescribed. And that's why Muslims around the world mm -hmm. follow it so diligently that right. the whole situation changes in Ramadan, whether mm -hmm. you are in a, in a Muslim house in, in US or in Saudi Arabia or in Africa mm -hmm. or Far East or wherever. So the whole world follows that. And that has the benefit that now uh, is showing by scientific evidences. If you, if you see the cellular structure, mm -hmm. how our body um, cells work and how the harmful um, proteins are removed and it, it even uh, vitalizes our brain. Our right, brain gets right. basically energy with the oxygen supply from the blood, but our blood gets better, our body organs functions better. So everything is purified through this process of photography. Yes, sir. That, that, that's, that's, that's what uh, so blood Dr. Cells and, says. Yeah. yeah. So the blood cells, the, 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 the blood cells are refurbished. The, the organs are basically yeah. refurbished. It's getting rid of all of the, exactly. the, the, the poisons and everything. Your intestines, your stomach, your liver, your kidneys. All, uh, all of them get the rest and all of them actually get re refurbished and revitalized. Mm, mm. So that's the, that's the science behind it then. Exactly. So that's why when people come out of Ramadan, they just feel like a brand new person. Subhanallah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I found I found that to be very, very true. Subhanallah. Another thing that I wanted to highlight about where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan ladi unzila fi il Quran. This, this month of Ramadan is where the Quran was revealed. Right. It was. It, I mean, we have Inzal is what the what the Sheikh was talking about yesterday. He's talking about Inzal and then Tanzil. Inzal it came down one time to Sama ud Dunya. So the entire Quran came down one time in Sama ud Dunya, uh, to the heaven of the to the universe of this world, and then over twenty three years, kind of Munazzalan, like it was revealed piecemeal to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, according to the incidents around him, and you know, certain incidents that would happen. Then Jibreel alayhi salam, Gabriel would come, and he would say, "This was re this was revealed by your Lord." So, it, not only is it uh, not only is it a, a a beneficial thing for the body, you know, scientifically speaking, of mm -hmm. course, uh, it's also something that's very important uh, in the religious aspect. So, can you can you explain a little bit more when it comes to the religious aspect? What are the what are the benefits religiously with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? So, one thing is سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا we hear and we obey, but what are some of the things that are religious about it? Those some religious the, benefits. Yeah, I think it it improves your spirituality. First and foremost, all humans have weakness. Uh, for example, it's difficult to control ourselves, yeah. control our anger, control our desires, mm. uh, control for something that we really like to have. So fasting teaches us to have a self-control. Mm. And that helps spiritually. A lot of our desires are controlled when we do fasting. And sp spirituality, you get better off. If every individual is well controlled within himself, mm. there won't be any argument between you and your wife or mm. your brother or mm. your parents mm. or anybody. Or the, idea the, the, the idea of self-restraint. Self-restraint is yeah. what it teaches you, you know. Yeah. So you become calmer and you, you and, and, and you deal with the subject in a peaceful manner. Mm. Because mm. peace is the is the is the main concept for us. Mm. We want to bring peace when you wish somebody. Brother Ust right. Ustad uh, Ahmad, you say peace be upon you. Yeah. So self-control brings peace. Mm -hmm. Peace brings good feelings. Of course. Yeah. And it spiritually tells you that somebody in control of you, you're not in control of yourself. Uh -huh. So you now start relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If something goes wrong, you say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide me to correct it. Yes. If yes. somebody is being too aggressive on him, tell yeah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him also to yeah, correct himself. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're you reminded, Allahumma inni yeah. salim. I, I, yeah, Allah, I'm fasting. I'm not going to react. You know yeah, what I mean? So, if, if I wasn't fasting, it might have had to been something. But now it's because we're fasting, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to chill. <laughs> yeah. You, so, you as a devotion, transfer yeah. all your controls to Almighty. Mm, Almighty is mm. in charge. Come on. We are not, we are only in charge for limited things. You know? Yes, yes. Of Most course. of our Fundamental things, we are not in charge. We, we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. Even our mm -hmm. brain, when it gets the guidance, it reacts in a, in a, in a nice manner. Mm -hmm. If you face a calamity, you'll be more peaceful and mm -hmm. you say it, is, it belongs to Allah. Right. Otherwise, you will see, oh, I have done a mistake. And you'll burn yourself you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> inside. Yeah. Emotionally, you'll be destroyed by thinking of it. Yeah. So, 
fasting helps you in not only physically, health-wise, but also spiritually and also psychologically. It gives mm -hmm. you that one if 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 you are peaceful to me, it's hard to be too aggressive with you. Yeah. If you're polite true. to me, it's contagious. I got yeah. to be polite with you. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, I mean, now that you mention it, it's actually something very, very incredible. You you highlighted something about that you're not in control. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is in control. And when you're fasting, you realize that because when when someone is fasting, they realize the blessing of food. Yes. Right. We were sustained all this time for yes. throughout our entire life, and not once did we ever starve to death, as they say. That's you know true. what I mean. So the sustenance comes from Allah. We think that we're in control, but really it's not. So it's a matter of of, of putting your full trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, as you know, come out exactly. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Kama razaq al like if you if you really put your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He would enrich you just like He enriches a bird. It goes out in the beginning of the day empty stomach and it comes back at the end of the day with a full stomach subhanallah but subhanallah yeah and yeah. I, I find that hadith very beautiful because it's like it teaches i mean the prophet sallallahu alaihi you know according to imam al-nawawi he says that it's the reason that the prophet sallallahu alaihi used the analogy of a bird is because that's how the heart of a believer is it knows that it's not in control of anything and it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's in control of everything that's true so even that that, that aspect of fasting really reminds you of that Exactly. Subhanallah. Can you explain one more time the the idea of autography? Because I find that just incredibly amazing. The fact that your body is flushing everything out. So what's the process that of, of autography? What is that? So if you in the if you see in the cellular structure, uh, our, our cells are continuously being developed, mm. and the old cells get uh, removed, damaged. Uh, so, so there's a constant so it's, 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 renewal. Our system is very dynamic. Right. While we are sleeping or we are awake or everything, our, our cells are functioning all the time. And this individual cell is a complete body by itself. If you see in the book, you will mm -hmm. get to know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And that gets its nutrients, that gets its energy, then it, then it transmits signals. It digests the food for you. For example, it, it makes you think, it makes your heart work. All of these uh, while in the process of this metabolism, do end up meeting with proteins that can be harmful. Mm -hmm. So, autophagy, according to Nobel Prize winning um, theory that uh, Dr. Oshiniro presented, it remove all those uh, toxins or bad the bad material from the from the cells and filters it and and keeps it. Revitalize. So it attacks those kind of things. So like within the body, it recognizes these these, these bad cells. Yeah, and, and, it, and yeah. it removes it. Got you. And also, for example, I mean, in, in a very simple, I mean, a mechanic sense. Right. Uh, you go to, I'm a you go to yeah. <laughs> if you if, yeah. if, 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 if if you want to service your camera. Right. If you want to service your car, you cannot uh, running the car and service it. You got to give mm -hmm. it a stop. Look inside. Exactly. Remove the thing. Yeah. Change the yeah. oil. Make it fresh, and then go. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, in very simplistic terms, you are giving your body organs the digestive system track, which is actually a feeder for the rest of the body, mm -hmm. giving it a rest, and it's allowing it, the other, other organs, to revitalize during that time. And, and as you see in today's world, the today's affluent world, we have more food produced today than any time in the history. Mm -hmm. And you can see there are so many health problems that by overeating. Yeah. Name one health problem that does not get triggered by overeating. Just about everything, whether it's a heart yeah. problem, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whether even it is, if it is cancer, whether it is even the uh, bones getting weak because yeah. of the excessive weight. Yeah. So my two sons are cardiologists, and they say <laughs> first thing you have to do is to control weight. Yes. And of course, yes. fasting does much more than that. Yeah. It teach yeah. it. Uh, is it teaches you spirituality, it teaches you bring to understanding your own controls, mm -hmm. what is in your control and how you can control your anger, control your desires, control, cons, control your greed. Mm -hmm. We all have some element of yeah. greed in our body. Human you know, we want to get the best car, we want to get the best clothes, we, right. want, to, we want to eat the best food and we yeah. want to usually end up eating more than we yeah, could yeah, handle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So all of those things, desires are are. Allah subhanahu wa has built into a system. Mm -hmm. Now, Islam and deen has full of benefits. We need to recognize what the benefits by jump-starting reading books like this. Mm. 
That's exactly it, right? This, there. This, yeah. this kind of book, as somebody mentioned, and it's not that this is like a yeah. workbook for Muslim. This is like a handbook for Muslims. I would simply say this is a warmer yeah. to understand Deen. Yes. Because once you understand the, the scientific notions, the benefits for this world, whether it's financial benefit, whether it's a spiritual benefit, whether it's a health benefit, whether it's a psychological benefit, mm -hmm. whether the, the, there are about 23 branches of science I've touched. Mm. And not only this is not only book on science, it talks about politics and humanities yes. and yeah. also deals with fitna. Mm -hmm. For example, misbeliefs about Islam. Yeah. Now, fitna is worse than murder. Mm -hmm. And what can you think? Well, how can the fitna be worse than murder? Yes. Take the example of what's happening in the world now. You created enough fitna, the oppressor looks like he's oppressed yeah, and, the, yeah, and, and yeah. the victim looks like uh, he's, the oppressor. he's the oppressor. So this is the fitna mm -hmm. with, with so much, I think, media coverage and with wrong reporting and re hiding the facts, mm -hmm. hiding the facts, not telling the truth creates fitna. Of course. Yeah. You know, if, if somebody wants to manipulate between us, uh, between say yeah. Ustad Ahmad and me and bring all the wrong information to yeah. you and makes He'll you tell me something hate about you that's not and right. makes you hate yeah. it's my weakness I might fall into fitna so mm -hmm. all of those things have to be read I think by the by when you are reading about Quran you also must read about some of the miracles of the Quran yeah. which extends you uh, uh, away which takes you into different branches Quran mm -hmm. is a multidisciplinary multitask multi-dimensional text. Mm -hmm. One must understand many branches of science and literature and history before you can extract the maximum benefit out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do get benefit by reading Quran's translation. No question about it. Mm -hmm. And it, it did all the 14 centuries, it did that. But as we progress more into science and more complex life, you need to understand more. For example, my second part of the book deals with ethics and equality and about even the politics. How mm -hmm. should you govern yourself? What mm -hmm. kind of republic a Islamic nation should have? Mm -hmm. I have mentioned the uh, papers where they say Islamicity Index has been built by two professors from George Washington University. Mm -hmm. Every country is rated against Islamicity Index, which deals with Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. How should you have justice system? How should you give the women's right? How should you give the rights to disabled people? How, should, how you should treat your neighbors? How you should treat with non-Muslims? how you should treat your poor people, mm -hmm. what should be the interaction between husband and wife, between siblings, between grandparents. So it deals with a lot of subjects, mm -hmm. not just science. I would like to keep telling people that only 30 chapters out of 200 chapters deal with science because science is very important. Yes. But rest of the- That's rest still the, a lot though. <laughs> <laughs> and rest yeah. of the chapters deal with the humanities in all aspects. For example, in the second book, I have given the stories of all prophets. Mm -hmm. About 1500 verses deal with the stories of prophets. Mm -hmm. Now those stories of prophets are given to us because it shows the how the human development took place from centuries, mm -hmm. from Adam mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to now. Yeah. So this is also this is also a book of human development. Yeah. What really happened during Adam's time? Then how he was Noah's created time, and uh, yeah. how he was created. Right. And what happened with during Noah's time and then Ibrahim salam's time, Yaqub salam, Yusuf salam, and you know all the way up to Musa alayhi salam, then and then Isa alayhi salam, and last and the final prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, which says all these prophets came before me and I'm extending the message. So message gets deeper, message gets more sophisticated, mm -hmm. message sometimes gets a little bit scientific also because down the road people would have much more understanding about the space, about the ground, about the oceans, yeah. about the climate, about the human body, yeah. about the human weaknesses, about the strength of human, and also the confrontational. Mm. Our confrontational become has also become very complicated now. Right, right. Everyone so wants to argue. This book, <laughs> yeah. the Quran, is uh, advancing the previous books sent by God. Mm, mm, <laughs> mm. Subhanallah, that's amazing. You know, that's that's one thing that I loved about your about, about your books is like when I was reading it, um, you know, I've, I obviously have a, I have a background in physics, but you know, when it comes to astrophysics, that was something else entirely. That, that just took me by surprise because there was equations and things like that that I had no idea about. Yeah. And it made me realize that, you know, the knowledge of the Quran, although, although we've been studying it for a very long time, it's like an ocean. The more you know, the less you know. 
The more you know, the less you know. Exactly. Yeah. The more knowledge you can on, you understand how much you do not know. Yeah. Just to give you, some people also told me you have brought too much mathematics and too much science into it. I said, the only reason I bring it, you don't have to read the chapter if you have, have difficulty. Yeah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran that uh, one day in heaven is equivalent to 50,000 years. Mm, no, mm. is Allah just giving random numbers? No. Nope. Now, if you calculate That's, with the yeah. speed of light with Einstein theory, which got the Nobel Prize, it makes one day on earth equivalent to uh, 50,000 years on earth equivalent to one day if you travel with the speed of light. Subhanallah. So those are the things because it is <laughs> yeah. the Quran, you know. Yeah, yeah. And 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 Allah Subhanahu subhanahu ta'ala say had it been from entity other than Allah, it would have many contradictions. Yes, so I'm yes. trying to prove only a minuscule amount of that there is yeah. no contradiction, even if the scientific field, there's no contribute uh, contradiction in the psychological field, there's mm -hmm. no contradiction in the political uh, arena, it, yeah. there's no contradiction in any branch of science. Yeah. In Arabic, ilm means ilm. Yeah. Knowledge and whereas knowledge. in English, we have compartmentalizes to different subjects like physics and chemistry mm. and mathematics and, and biology and medicine and engineering and so on and so forth mm. to make it easy for us to study. But yeah. Quran deals with all ilm, yeah. complete ilm. As we progress as a human, we will understand more of it. As yeah. we go along. There are still many verses, I think, many scholars will not be able to clearly explain it. Yeah. Because they but haven't reached time. Level. Within time, yeah. yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll yeah. take time. So this this book is not for only uh, 20th century is, uh, is over. That the, the book, uh, 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 not is become obsolete. This is for all times. There's mm -hmm. no contradiction mm -hmm. and it supports. And our, the main goal is to make your life better in this world. So as a bonus, Allah will give you Akhra also. Mm -hmm. So many of the khutbas that I have heard in many different countries emphasize the benefits of Akhra. Mm, mm. I the want afterlife. Muslims yeah. to understand the benefits of Quran for this world. Yeah. And Akhra yeah. will come as a bonus package. Yeah. <laughs> SubhanAllah. <laughs> so the logic and the science behind yeah. it, uh, if we haven't discovered something, there's a lot of people that they say, I mean, the way I see it, there's a lot, everything has already been proved by science from the Quran. You know, like yeah. science is basically taking it from the Quran. It's yeah. like, actually, yeah, this makes sense. And you talk about the, the, the theory of the yeah, big Science crunch. is conforming to what was stated in the Quran. Exactly. Now, take yeah. an example of a return of uh, uh, Ramses II body. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Pharaoh's the time body. Of Pharaoh's, yeah. Pharaoh's body, yeah. Yeah. How, how, how was it preserved? When, when people yeah. were reading before 1940, what would they know? Yeah. That uh, Pharaoh body, Allah Ta'ala says, will be returned. Mm -hmm. Only after it was accidentally broken down and... Pharaoh's body was exposed, then it was the first time a dead body was uh, passed for, was created and mm, sent from mm. Egypt to France and so many scientists studied it and came to know by yeah. genetics and everything this was Pharaoh. SubhanAllah. The Quran says that. Yeah. So, so before people, 1940. People, before 1940, who would know yeah, what they didn't mean know by Pharaoh? Meant, yeah. So there are, there may be some uh, verses of Quran that you will get to say, oh, Wow, this yeah. is now happening, you know. Yeah, and we find that that that's very common. Like when we talk to people that are non-Muslim and they just want to contradict, and they would, you know, they say, "Oh, this is all, you know, this is a book of fables." And there's people that say that, and the Quran actually says there's going to be this, these people that are going to say this book say is, that, yeah. yeah, it's a book of Only fables. Predicted there. Yeah, well, it's it's amazing how even even back at the even before 1940s. Let's just say 1910, 19, I think the first car was invented in 1904, the Ford Model T, if I'm not mistaken. But even before then, um, talking about the combustion engine, you know what I mean? Because I, I know that there's going to be those people that are going to be watching like, wait, hang on a second. He's got a car background. What's he talking about the Ford Model <laughs> T? So not, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about before even then, before, before you know, the, the introduction to the 19th century. Uh, there was no cars. There was a time that there was no cars and it was just carriages. It was a horse and carriage. People would use yeah, a donkey. Yeah. Uh, and we find the verse in the Quran, for example, that tabaqa tabaqan an tabaq. You will you'll be riding upon layers upon layers. You yeah. know what I mean? At that time, you know, if the sci if the scholars are they're gonna be scratching their heads like what does that mean? You know what I mean? Now we see Double decker buses, we see jumbo jets, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're you're literally riding on top of uh, layers, right. you know what I mean? So it's just a matter. So what you're saying basically is that if we haven't discovered it now, it doesn't mean that it's inconsistent in yeah. the Quran. It just we haven't you'll reached that level of knowledge. Yes, yeah. 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 You'll, you'll learn about that uh, in the future. Mm. So uh, uh, another thing that that uh, this book addresses is the misbeliefs about Islam. Mm. 
for mm-hmm. example mm-hmm. i have heard for many times back in my country that islam was spread by sword mm. come on yeah, if, if you look at the different khazawat that, yeah. that prophet yeah. sallallahu alaihi wasallam fought that way those battles were imposed on him yeah, yeah in the defense he had to protect his city and his yes, people and himself yes, yeah and if you see less than 300 people died mm. and the islam was spread into different continents mm-hmm. and i have also compared against with the so many different wars have taken place first world war 17 million people perished second world war 30 million people perished what did they gain out of that even now so many people mm. are dying every day yeah what are we gaining about mm-hmm. it and those were the battles that so there is a big value for blood mm-hmm. prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to save the lives of muslims or non muslims yes, yes he yes. was not interested in getting anybody killed mm-hmm. he pardoned his worst enemies mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when fatah makkah took place he let everybody go he said don't pursue them if they go and close the door yeah. don't go after them don't Uh, you know whoever kill, is in the house of so and so is safe and yeah. anybody just you know not fighting with you don't fight yeah yeah when you are attacked as a defense you protect yourself yes so yes. there is so much evidence in all the misbeliefs that i have rectified and presented mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. and in fact if you see there are about maybe about 25 or 30 chapters on miscom mm-hmm. uh, women not getting enough inheritance yeah, women yeah. are not equally treated what is this hijab putting mm. women under cover and yeah. oppressing them yeah <laughs> the whole idea look of look at how Lord, liberated uh, we yeah. are so you you yeah. must read some of the misconceptions of it mm-hmm. or just look at this what wow, what do this muslims do they cut the half the neck of the animal and let it suffer and um and then you eat it as call it halal but yeah. when the blood is gone from when the, the body drained, all the yeah. toxins are gone out yeah, so exactly. there is a scientific benefit in it yeah, yeah. not eating pork is a scientific benefit in exactly. it exactly not exactly. taking wine is a scientific benefit in it yeah. not taking drugs is good for uh, for your body and for your yeah. mind and for and for your whole Uh, civilization yeah exactly civilizations not only home the civilization gets destroyed by mm-hmm. indulging into uh, narcotics yeah so the all these misconceptions i have dealt with them and rectified them and i've placed them as misconceptions right so that the right. people who already have the doubt oh this is about me this is me. yeah it's addressing me this directly, addressing yeah, me directly. Yeah, subhanallah <laughs> subhanallah i've i personally myself i've benefited from your books uh you know immensely alhamdulillah and uh, there's lots of translations by my teacher dr mustafa khattab as well so i found that you know yeah. mashallah he's your teacher <laughs> yeah he's yeah he's one of my teachers alhamdulillah so uh, jazakallah khair and, and jazakallah khair for yourself yeah, as I, well yeah one thing i want to bring, i'm i'm mm. going to a uh, Egypt and I'm trying to make a, this book presented in Al Azhar University. Yeah, right. And right. Uh, one of the, the most chief, prominent chief, universities chief, in the Islamic yeah, tradition, by the way. The chief Imam uh, has uh, is also uh, interested in me uh, presenting that, mm-hmm. and there's professors in Islamic studies also. I want to take this book so that it should be read in departments of anthropology, mm. human development, not just in religious sciences, mm. but in all sciences. I think it should be in in a lot more than that too. It should it should be in museums and and you know like in 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 planetariums because it talks about all of these, you know, all of the science behind it. Like it was this stuff was was told to us and it was taught to us you know at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 1450 x years ago yeah. right so I, i mean i think that there's a lot of benefit in here so yeah I mean, it's for the general humanity muslims or mm. non muslims every everybody with a intriguing mind with open open mind should read this book of course and of it's course. up to him whether to accept uh, islam or not yeah he, yeah sure exactly. even later yeah, on but yeah. my idea is to show what quran contains so that all people should read it yeah all people of reasoning and knowledge yeah. should read it But don't come on judgment they say oh I didn't I didn't get the sign I didn't get the <laughs> the signs are right here so if you would like to buy if you would like to purchase uh, the the clear uh, the clear signs of the Quran by Dr Hamid uh, Siddiqui or sorry brother Hamid Siddiqui uh, the the link is in our bio inshallah and uh, give and give us love it's an amazing text I myself has been have benefited a lot from it everyone that I I meet that that has read this book has you know they will testify to that truth so uh, brother Hamid jazakallah khair very very much for for coming in and sharing with us uh, your your amazing insights and your amazing wisdom uh with us and and uh and gracing us with your with your presence thank you very much ustad ahmed and also thanks to furqan for giving me the opportunity to do, the, do that i'm very grateful to you jazakallah for your patience Jazakallah. and this opportunity wa iyyakum assalamu alaykum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everybody <laughs>